of my videos is gonna go viral, I can just see a fight will break out in class, and those campus security will come, and you know the whole the whole thing. Um, all right, before we go into the discussion proper today, um, I want to talk about a, a possibility for this class, and I get these um, opportunities from time to time, and they frequently do not come at a very opportune time. And they also, uh, yeah, I mean, they, 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 these opportunities come when they come, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, from time to time, I get nonprofits that are interested in, and they want, they want a free website, essentially. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they approach me, and they typically ask me if, you know, I have student or students that, that want to do that. And I don't know the requirements, so I can't, I can't identify for sure if this would be like a good match for this class. But I'm guessing, yeah, probably, all right? I actually have two opportunities, and I have to look at them both. One is, uh, one is definitely a nonprofit. The other, I don't know what it is. I just remember reading an email. I wrote it down, and I'll look it up, and I'll know it when I need to know it, all right? Uh, but at any rate, um, the thought I had is we could possibly take this on as a project where we could work on it individually, we could try to divide it into groups. I don't have plans in the semester for a project, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't do it, all right? Projects like this are good for a few reasons. First of all, a real project is going to be a better learning experience than anything I can make up, provided it's the right project. All right? If it's not the right project, then it may be a great learning experience, but not for this class, right? maybe for some other class. So, so I have to identify if, if it's right, and then I have to see how I can adjust the curriculum. I guess another possibility is if it doesn't really fit in the curriculum, I might be asking if some of you want to take on it as just sort of a side thing. The big advantage of that is, you know, it gives you something for a portfolio. Um, so I will have more details probably, you know, within the next class or two, depending on, on what all is going on. Um, so um, I just want to kind of put that out there as, as you know, to, to think about, do you think you have the time to take on another project? Um, what if it was considered part of this class so that eliminates some of the other homework for this and, and so on. The one thing is we could even um, adapt the curriculum if they have a particular requirement that we don't address in this class. That's one possibility, you know. Um, I just don't know the requirements yet. You know, this is a mobile website, but certainly everyone developing a website wants to have their website work in a mobile environment. So, um, even though they they're not looking for a mobile site per se, I'm sure the site that they want to create, they want to work on a mobile device as well. So, um, I think it would be appropriate that way. I just don't know, for example, how much. You know, do they want database interactivity? Do they want you know what kind of things that they want on this? All right, so I'll, 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 uh, I'll have more details within the next class or two. I always hate when people do that to me, to say, I, I might sometime in the future talk to you about something, all right? Because it's, kind of, it's almost like, you know, well, don't tell me that now. Tell me when you're ready to talk. But this is kind of a preview. Yes? I was just going to say, um, I was talking to him, uh, talking to my dad the other day, and he owns a design firm, uh, and he said that, what people are looking for now most are responsive web pages because they don't want to pay for two separate pages. Right. So I, I, I just throw that, that surprised me. Right. I didn't know that. So right. that out by way of up to date industry standards, that seems to be what people want. Yeah. Th yeah. Well, um, my dad's clients are all really cheap, which is also possible. <laughs> that, that's too, too. Well, and not so, mad, not so much that they're all cheap, but, uh, you know, if he has a, uh, you know, if he has a certain demographic, you know, and, and, and again, Cheap was your word, not mine. But you know, if he has a certain demographic for a certain sort of site, um, that very well could be true. But yeah, responsive is definitely definitely big. So at any rate, we'll see we'll see what uh, how this pans out. What I want to do today is I want to 
roughly cover three things other than what I just talked about. I want to talk about your next assignment. All right. I want to talk about what? jQuery Mobile as it relates to forms and show you the one example that we had um, that, that, that is up there on the web. And last but not least, talk about the jQuery um, theme roller. It's called jQuery, jQuery Mobile Theme Roller. So, um, I'll have to review my notes, but I think the next topic after this is localization. In other words, how can you, you know, the key thing about a mobile device is that it's mobile. And therefore, you can definitely take more advantage of knowing precisely where someone is. You can do that in a desktop environment too, right? But you can really do that in a mobile environment. So um, the first thing I want to do is, oh, your next assignment. Your next assignment, if you remember your, your lab, I think six and seven was a two-part lab. where you created multiple pages about some topic. All right? And I want you to have a separate mobile and a separate uh, desktop site. I want you, to, have, I want you to, to make alterations of that in two respects. One of them is I want you to take the mobile version of your site and give it the jQuery mobile look. All right? So... The mobile version should look jQuery mobile. All right. So you're not really making a new page. You're probably just flipping some style sheets in there, maybe. Knock on wood. All right. You'll see. Because what jQuery mobile does might interfere with what you were doing in your style sheet. You might have to adjust some things. The other thing I want you to do is I want you on at least one page to give different content slash appearance for a tablet versus anything else. So tabletize at least one page. Now, in order to do that, you have to know which page your tablet goes to. Does your tablet go to the jQuery? Uh, does it go to the mobile page or does it go to the desktop page? And that'll be based on your user agent detection and all that. But whatever your tablet, you know, whatever page your tablet ends up in, take one of your pages and make it custom for a tablet. Give it some different content. All right. Now to do that, that's going to require Warful. All right. Which means that you can, uh, you're going to need to either put it on your, uh, uh, put it, uh, put Warful on your server. Or you're going to need to run it on our server. And my suggestion is that you run it on our server because that's not like the thing that you want to wrestle with. All right. Now, the question is though, how do you work locally then if it has to be on our server for it to work? Well, what you can always do is you can always fake the function out until you're ready to go. All right. In the old days, we called this like writing stub functions. It's where you eliminate code and you hard code values that later on are going to be set for real. So, um, let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to download the one example that we did in class. So you're saying the one desktop version of the page needs to be a tablet? Like, optimized for tablets? Well, where, well, you have to identify in your problem, where do tablets go? Uh, okay. All right. So probably goes to the mobile version. And if it goes to the mobile version, then make the mobile version. So it wouldn't be the jQuery and the tablet. Or the jQuery. Yeah, no, you don't think it ever meant. So in the end, we're going to have jQuery. three separate formatted sites, essentially. You, you don't have to do a whole site for the tablet. You can just take, like for example, you could take the mobile site and have a mobile phone version and a mobile tablet version. For just one For just one page, one page. yeah. So there'd be three versions of one page, two versions of two pages. Depends how you write it. You could redirect them to another page, or you could simply include the Warful and include extra content gotcha. on the desktop oh, page.
All right, let me show you what we could do in this example. I think the index is the only one of these that I did the Werfel for. Yeah, I did. All right, in this case, this would be what I would mean. You'd have some code in there that would look to see if it's a tablet or not. Now, if I tried to run this on our server, it's going to give me grief because I don't have those Werfel files on this server. So, like, if I went and copied this over to our web server, this is the second and fifth. If I went and I copied this over here, and tried to run it, I mean, I can understand why they have this on campus, but they really have to make the instructor every day promise not to bully anyone from the web browser. All right, I get an error, right? I get an error because I'm running it on this server, and Werfel's not installed on this server. Therefore, it can't find these files. that are in my includes file. Can't find these Werfel config files. All right. Can't find this, eiNetPub. All these are files that exist on our CIS SQL server. So does that mean you have to run this on the CIS uh, uh, SQL server? The final version, yes. But while you're developing, what you can do is you can fake it. All right. How do you fake it? Again, it's the notion of a stub function. So what I could do is I could do something like this. In my index page, I could comment out these lines of code. If you remember, the purpose of these lines of code create a variable called class, which either has a value of mobile, tablet, or desktop. All right. So for real, I'm going to need these, this code in for it to work. But until I'm at the point where I'm ready to get that to work, I can simply do, all right, let's pretend I'm on a tablet. All right, so I can just hard code that in. And again, certainly don't want to leave it like that. All right, but at the very least, I could do my testing on a machine that doesn't have the Warful installed. So I could go and copy this um, to the proper location. And I could run it on this server without really having. And what do I get? Notice I get the tablet version, if you remember this example. Uh, this is the tablet version. I can tell that because we have the background image but we don't have the video. We have a link to the video. So it's the old fake it till you make it philosophy, right? Which is a good philosophy of life, which I, I think I learned from uh, Tyra Banks on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> what she said on that show was, like, if you don't have the confidence like, to, to go out, pretend that you do. And, and say, I'm going to act as though I am a, a confident person. And so you adopt the mannerisms and you go in. And that's great advice for like a job interview, all right? 
Because studies have shown if you affect the body language of someone that's confident, you'll feel more confident. You'll feel better about yourself. You know, what do you think of when you think of someone that's nervous? You know, you think of someone with very tight body language. You know, uh, they're 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 hunched in. They're probably not breathing completely. Whereas if you sit up, you know, look confident and all that, it actually affects doing doing the physical characteristics that actually affects your mood. But that's not why we're doing it here. All right. We're doing it here to avoid having to install Werfel on our development um, um, system until you finish. I've done this in a lot of different contexts. Uh, when I was working on a project that required an Oracle database, well, I didn't have a full instance of Oracle on my laptop, right? So I used another sort of database. And I just had something in an include file. I just swapped back and forth. I commented out, uncommented out. And if I was working out on my laptop, you know, I would work on my test little, little itty bitty database. And if I was then doing the full production thing, I would connect to the actual Oracle database. So there's a lot of things you can do like this to test before you're 100% completed. And again, I sort of encourage that mentality because, you know, we want to do this a little piece at a time anyhow. So therefore, it's okay to hard code some values, even if you know later on you're going to replace them with like a real function. Hard code them for now, get, it, get that down, and then go and add that extra piece of functionality onto it. So that's my advice for the upcoming lab. All right. Werfel, or not Werfel, but jQuery Mobile and Forms, which is the next. Let's go and let's look at the page running. Actually, I'm going to bring it, this example down. Ooh, I didn't have to promise I'm not going to bully. Right. I was grading all weekend, so I'm automatically going into grading mode when I see Angel. What do I want? I want content, I want lectures. And I want to pull what I uploaded for today. over to inetpub. I actually could get rid of everything else but this from inetpub just so I'm not distracted. And it's going to holler at me because it doesn't think I have permission, but then I'll tell him it's okay. Let me delete it. <laughs> it is, it's griping me about putting stuff in, yet I can just go and delete everything in there. Wow. That's, that's awesome. All right, so now I'll go to the desktop, where these are, and copy them over. Now, if we go and look at this, it builds off the example that we looked at last time. All right. This is the example we had last time, if you recall. And I'm just going to open it up in a browser. I'm not going to go through the mobile emulator, um, at least not right away, because um, this gives us a good idea of, of what it looks like. Um, there is a popular tartans thing. We can go to that. This is that little code that I added. And we did the filtering. All right, which is nifty. All that is based on just built-in functionality. I didn't code an ounce of that. 
But there is a link to create here. All right. And I click on create and I get this form. And as you can tell, it's a form that is pretty nifty. All right. Um, in the manner in which it's styled, let's take a look. We can put in a name, the McZellers family. Optional description. Um, then we have this, where we have a drop down. And how many stitches of those? Then we have how many stitches of those? And so far down the line. Now, what's meaningful, there's a couple things that are meaningful about this example. Well, they didn't put a submit button on here, which is kind of dumb. But that's okay. Um, you need a PHP script to do something with this data anyhow. So um, we'll, we'll add a, a submit button and we'll, we'll play around with styling it and all that. But one thing that is significant, in this case, you have, I think, a total of like seven colors maybe that you can pick. Six or seven, I lost count as I was scrolling. If you notice, that code is the same for all six colors. In other words, I have a drop down where I can pick this list of color, this color, I can pick the stitch count, and then I can pick the next color and the stitch count, and I can do that over and over and over again. One reason I like this example, and then we're going to go over it, is because as a programmer, if you see anything that you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, it should, a light should go off, a siren should go off in your head that says, maybe I can do it better some other way. All right? And in this case, really, all we're literally doing is we're repeating three, or two actually, form controls six or seven or however many times. All right? So what we did, what they did in the code here, is they included that in a PHP loop. And what that does is that will create the number of um, sets of form elements that we, that we need. All right? So let's look at them. That is in build.php. This is another reason why if I'm doing a project like this, I'm going to make it a PHP project and I'm not even going to have any static HTML pages because you never know when you can like benefit from just a little piece of PHP functionality, even if it's just include files. All right. So a case like this doesn't really do any of the um, major functionality that PHP is typically used for, but it makes this code a lot more simple that we can just write a chunk of HTML and loop through it six times, all right, or seven times or whatever. So again, I would, if I have at my disposal PHP, I'm going to make my pages PHP even if I don't use any of that functionality, all right? So let's look at this guy. All right, we see all the typical stuff in here. We'll look at some of the jQuery mobile stuff in a second. What I'm interested in is this chunk of code here. I'm going to make it smaller. I can make it bigger again um, in a bit, but I'm going to make it smaller for a while. Because from line 37 through line 89, I have a loop. All right? And remember, this is both one of the most flexible aspects of PHP and also can be confusing and prone to errors. It's the fact that you can, you know, PHP is like the Wild West. You, know, you can do anything you want in a PHP program. You can jump in and out of PHP mode as often as you want. In this case, we jump into PHP mode in line 37 and we exit it. 
We then come back in the PHP mode here on line 89 to close our loop. And everything between line 38 and line 88 is a chunk of HTML that forms the body of the loop. All right. As such, as a body of the loop, what it does is it gets repeated because it's enclosed within a PHP loop. All right. Let's take a minute to look at this PHP loop. Um, some of you that have done programming in other languages probably have seen loops. And this is very similar to looping that you have in JavaScript, but it sort of bears repeating. A loop in PHP looks like this. This must have been an exciting class. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably the 125 class, probably talking about how stuff is actually stored on a disk. Um, pardon me? I never started anything like that in my 125 class, but it wasn't helping us, a different teacher. Oh, well, that's probably a problem. Yeah, it was a yeah. I it was a big, I'm having a problem now at 145 because half the things that he thought that mm. we learned, we didn't learn. Did you ah. learn about the squirrels? Right. A, P, <laughs> a PHP loop looks like this. Four. And then we have a variable. Usually we use I. I simply means like the index of the loop. In other words, the counter of the loop. This is actually a throwback to the old Fortran days where integers were, integer variables started from I through N. So you needed an integer, you used an I. You know, you didn't declare it. But at any rate, I'm reminiscing too much. <laughs> I less than, let's say, 6. I plus plus. Then we have a chunk of code that forms the body of the loop. And then we have the curly brace that indicates the end of the loop. Now in our case, the start of the loop is in one PHP block, and the end of it is in another. And therefore, these statements are a block of HTML. Again, we could have it just in one giant PHP block if the, the statements in there were, were, were PHP code. Let's make sure we understand this. I represents a variable. All user-defined variables in PHP start with a dollar sign. Okay. You don't need to declare variables in PHP. All right? You can just start using them. All right? Which, you know, is a blessing and a curse. That makes it easy if you're lazy. But that also makes it easy to get a variable name wrong and think you're referring to a variable that you used up above when really you're giving it a different name down here so it represents a different variable. Yes. So, so you can declare it like you would like C sharp or another language, like in that typical way or no? I, not, not that I know of. I don't, I'm okay. not aware of any of anything that declares a PHP variable as a data type anyhow. All right. And it's also weakly typed, which means that it figures out what something is based on what, how you use it. So in other words, I'm using I like a number here, so it knows I is a number. I could later on in my code change i into a string simply by putting my name in it or whatever. All right. So you do have to declare a variable in PHP if you want it to be 